force it to I, come out. What do you? <sighs> You're a genius. Well, I know. But what I say? No, no, wait, no, 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 no. Hello, friends. My name is Naz Perez, and you're watching the big ticket interview for Blue Beetle. And I am so excited to talk to all of you here today because I've been doing these interviews for over a year now. And this is the first time I've sat down with a predominantly Latinx cast. Let's go. Let's go. This is go. such a big deal. And I was thinking about while I was prepping for this, the first Latino superhero I ever saw on screen. I don't know if you guys ever saw this TV uh, show in Mexico. It was a comedy. It was called El Chapulín Colorado. Of course. Colorado. Of course. Chapulín we make Colorado. a reference to it in the movie. Yeah. Oh my God, no way! Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. he was inspired by a bug too, and yeah. he was just so uh, legendary. So that's what I was thinking about as I was prepping for this because that was such a long time ago, and now here we are celebrating DC's first Latino mm -hmm. live action superhero, Blue Beetle, on the big screen. Oh. Such a big deal! So the, yes. Wow, this is gonna be loud. I could already tell. <laughs> so the first thing I, that I thought was really cool about Blue Beetle's story is that like other DC superheroes, like how Superman has Metropolis and Batman has Gotham, mm -hmm. Jaime has Palmera City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted you, I wanted to first ask you, what is that city like, and how is it different than like a Gotham or Metropolis? And this question is for all of you guys. Well, I'd say you know, first off, with Palmera City, it's a it's a city made specifically kind of like for our movie and for this storyline that we're making with Blue Beetle, and. Originally, the character takes place in El Paso, Texas, and we decided to make it to Palmera. Kind of what you were saying, Blue Beetle deserves his own city, right? Batman has Gotham, you, Superman has Metropolis, and we wanted to, to have a world that felt like it was reminiscent of the culture that Jaime grew up in, right? It has the, the, the sound of a place like, like Rio, or, or the smell of Boyle Heights, or the, wow. the people of an El Paso, but it's a, a metropolis of Latinos, and I think it, it helped uh, bring the story from a, like an, an American story to a worldwide kind of picture. I love it. I can't wait to see it. And I think the kitchen was not a big kitchen, but there's a lot that happens inside the house. It wasn't a big house, but it is as, as authentic as any friend of mine I used to go pick up for school and his grandma was living with them. Yeah. And all the trapes, all the chairs, all the keychains, all the stuff that was in the wide open is just amazing. I mean, yeah. the mullet or rat's tail. What, what, is that a mullet or a rat's tail that you're wearing? Well, you know, a lot of people would say uh, rat's tail, but I say uh, muleta. Muleta, <laughs> it's so good. I love that you brought up the house, George. I can't wait to see more of it because my favorite scene in the trailer is when the scarab uh, bonds with Jaime in the house. And of course, for people watching who don't know what the scarab is, it's this ancient alien relic, chooses Jaime as its host, gives him these incredible powers, this beautiful suit. <laughs> but for those of you that were in that scene, can you just give me a scene breakdown of that? Because it looked like so much fun shooting it. That was a really fun scene to shoot. I think that was one of my favorite scenes to shoot. It took you guys like days. Oh yeah. It took, yeah, it took us a few days to do it. And it's mainly because there's, it's so loud. There's so much screaming. So <laughs> but what a, what a fun scene to get to just, that's, that's kind of why you get into acting, yeah. is to do the crazy, and larger than life moments. I think that was one of the first things we shot together as a family, yeah. wasn't it? It was the transformation scene, which I, I think I, that's another reason I loved it so much is because that whole scene, we were also finding the family yeah. mm -hmm. within it through all our reactions. And I mean, Angel, our amazing, phenomenal director, um, mm -hmm. let us like run wild. He was just like, go. And we did, and it was so much fun. And watching it, you can see <laughs> all that fun and that chaos, the absolute chaos that would ensue in a Latino household if, a bug, a metal alien bug was attaching itself in the middle of your living room. I mean, as soon, as, as, soon as he gets it in his hand and he's not even looking at it and it lights up and he goes, I think it likes me. Nothing is ever the same after that. No. No. Because I think it likes and me. And it doesn't like him, by the way. <laughs> For me, it was, it was the moment where you're like, get it off my face and you see the muleta just go back and forth. Yeah. And then they had that guy on a on a compression like wire yeah, shot piston. across the room like a piston. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Watching that stunt. It was just shh. Yeah. It was really George. Wow. <laughs> That's, like That's, like, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Sholo, I love that you said it doesn't like him because the scare very much has a mind of its own. And I know the incredible director, Angel Manuel Soto, uh, looked to a lot of things for inspiration. The New 52 run, Infinite Crisis, Injustice 2 video game. Yeah, what yeah. type of personality does the scarab have and how does Jaime interact with it? 
It definitely, like you said, it has a mind of its own, but it also has an objective. Like the, the, the scarab on each planet has an objective and it, you know, as nefarious as it may be, the one on Earth, or on at least Jaime's Earth, doesn't follow its orders. And, and you see it's at the beginning, it's kind of resistant to how righteous or, or aloof Jaime might be. It, it's like ready to destroy the world. Mm. But uh, that's kind of the, it's, that's the great thing about our story is that, you know, by the end of the movie, both Kaji and Jaime are kind of in, in different places. And he really can't see it, so there's a scene where he's putting on his shirt and it's, it's uh, in the back. He turns yeah. around and he goes. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, there's something on. And he's like, just like, I don't need to hear this. And I'm like, what? It's coming out of the middle of his and back. And then you just hear him like. Ah! That was, yeah, screaming is always fun. It, we did a lot of screaming. <laughs> Screaming is so fun. It's so cathartic. I can't wait to find out more about the scarab because to me, the coolest part about the scarab is that um, it provides Blue Beetle with tools and weapons based yep. on what he imagines. And I was like, thank God my Latina mom didn't have one growing up because she would be like, wooden spoon, wooden spoon. <laughs> um, but the sword, <laughs> <Chungla. Yeah. laughs> but the sword in the trailer, it looks like the buster sword yeah. from like Final Fantasy VII. What, tell me how that was made and what, it, what what was it like shooting with that? So, you know, the Ted Cord gadgets, right, mm -hmm. as, as Bruno, I'm sure, can speak to from the, the, the Jenny Cord side, are, are inspired by Ted Cord's designs. Mm -hmm. And then Jaime's Blue Beetle designs are inspired by, like, what a 22-year-old kid would have liked. Like, uh, Angel is super into anime. I'm super into anime. We love video games. We love comics. So it was really an opportunity for us to both pay homage to the things that as you know young kids we liked yeah. you know akira is a huge inspiration for angel wow um, that's but, really cool and and getting to explore also the alien part of it as well yeah and the you know finding all of it but the ted cord gadgets are much more eclectic than mine. <laughs> so cool. he was never able to use the power so he nice. has some, some gizmos in there so so we'll get some pop culture references in there. I oh, mean, 100%. Yeah, I yeah. still can't believe El Chapulín Colorado's in there. I'm like, yes. oh my God, that's amazing. No, surprised. He's in there. But also the first real test of that is when you see the Big Belly Burger, you know, so people that know movies know yeah, right. the homage of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you see yeah. watch people mm -hmm. watch the trailer and people that really are into that say, oh, look at the Big Belly yeah. Burger. I mean, like, it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how Milagro's like, you haven't opened it yet? Yeah. Like, it's Cause so. Cause that's like <laughs> common sense. It's like, <laughs> because because you especially when you have a box of a burger. Yeah. I know, we'd be like, she's not here. Like, damn, she got you whipped. <laughs> <laughs> like, you listening to her immediately. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. ma'am. <laughs> Even talking to you guys now, it truly feels like you're such a family. And aside from like the weapons and stuff we're gonna get to see, it feels like Jaime's real strength comes from his family. So let's talk about the family. George, you play Rudy, his yeah. uncle. I feel like the internet's always talking about daddies and mothers, but let's talk about <laughs> uncle and Theo energy. Cause Rudy just seems hilarious. His Batman is a fascist line got so many reactions uh, online. Do you have a favorite reaction that you've seen to that? You know, Batman is a fascist is a pretty good one because they go, George Lopez called Batman a fascist. I'm like, hey, no, no, no. Uncle Rudy called Batman a fascist. <laughs> I like Batman. But, you know, it just, when the trailer came out, it just it just trended everywhere. And it was I think it was a great way to kind of plan our flag that this movie's gonna be a little bit different. Did you see a favorite reaction online? I mean, on YouTube, there's just things that make people just scream out loud. And yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah I mean, we, we all know our favorite reaction. <laughs> but I mean, Rudy, I mean, the whole idea of having to hide that rat's tail for, you know, six months or three months that I was traveling around, it wouldn't let nobody, you know, see it. And then I was in New York at the airport and, and I had it down and I saw that guy, Jerry Lorenzo from Fear of God. And he's like, yo, man, I love your hair like that, bro. You know, keep it like that. I said, no, it's for a thing. He's like, no, no, keep it, man. She looks nice. <laughs> Wait, so was it your hair or they, they put it in? Or? They put it in. Okay. But yeah. you kept it for months. I kept, you know. That's so cool. <laughs> I like the new look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> George, it looks so good on you. Did you, as Rudy, get to say anything in Spanish or Spanglish in the film that you were like, whoa, I can't believe this is going to be said on a superhero film? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, now you got to tell I mean, me. We're filming, the, everything. We're yeah, filming in the movie. fort, and uh, he was running, and I said, Cabezón, this way. And I, and I thought, I don't think in the DC or Marvel universe anybody ever said, Cabezón, this way. You're talking to a superhero. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but there's a lot there's more. Lot, than there's a lot of stuff in there that, yeah. <laughs> that we have to look forward to. There's well. some stuff that's subtitled. There's some stuff that's not. And then there's some stuff that is hidden a little by sound. That's so cool. I can't wait to see that on screen. Um, Belisa, you play Milagro, Jaime's yeah. sister. What is their brother-sister relationship like and why is she so important to Blue Beetle? Um, I think Milagro and Jaime definitely grew up like very close. And I think 
Milagro as much as she's like, ugh, like I'm better. Like she's always looked up to Jaime. But like along with the rest of the family, I think it's important because, you know, not only do we ground Jaime throughout the film, like when he's struggling with becoming this massive like superhero, but we also lift him back up by the end. Like it truly is a family effort in this entire movie. And um, Milagro, uh, she's pretty cool. Yeah. She's pretty cool. Strong. <laughs> she seems pretty dope. I'm yeah. excited for that. She gets some of it from her brother. Like, I won't lie, you know. <laughs> I love you guys really feel like a real family. Bruna, let's talk about uh, Jenny Cord. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everyone watching knows this, but Jaime Reyes is actually the third iteration of Blue Beetle after Dan Garrett and Ted Cord. Uh, so I wanted to know, what is your character's relation to Ted Cord, and how do people view Ted in this the, the world in this film? So Jenny's... Ted's daughter, <laughs> which is really exciting. Ted, before disappearing, he was in charge of Cord Industries. And now Jenny is trying her best to keep her dad's legacy. He is really important for the movie, though, because we use all of his gadgets. It's the really the first man cave, I believe. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a throwback, so it's the first... He's got some Oreo cookies in there, pallets of Oreo cookies. Yeah, He's got some the, cool the, tools. The bug ship, so... Thank you, Dad. Because if it wasn't for him, We'd working on restoring family, his car. Yeah, we wouldn't be. Yeah, we'd, be, we'd still be in the edge keys if it wasn't for Ted. Yeah. Thanks. I'm always curious: is there like a romantic connection between Jaime and Jenny that we can look forward to seeing in the movie? Or ooh, how was she received when she walks into the to the Reyes house? <laughs> mm -hmm. Not really. Not fans. Us two yeah. especially. Not oh, fans. really. Yeah, Jaime is the the only one that yeah. likes. She has two Jenny. eyes and eyelashes, so I'm like, yeah, hey, she's. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's all I need. That's all I need. Um, at first, I don't think um, Jenny is looking for any romance. She has a lot to take care of in his life already. At first, but, Jaime is the same way, by the way. Oh it's not yeah. Just Jenny. But she's you know? a lot of oh, yeah. Jaime has got his life. But in she's care. the one that um, gives him the the scarab. Scarab, yeah. Right. So Thanks. I'm sorry, and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the two great lines. And also, um, I know that Jenny's aunt is played by Susan Sarandon. Yeah! And Shola, which is so cool. I know. Shola, I wanted to ask you, what can you tell us about Susan Sarandon, Harvey Gann, who I love, and Raul Max Trujillo's villains in this movie? Because what a trifecta, man. Yeah, yeah on, you know, on the Reyes side, you have kind of the, some of the people sitting here. And then on the other side of that, the, the chord side, you have Susan Sarandon, who is, kills it. You know, I, it was quite surreal to get to be present with her and, and to, you know, act alongside of her. And she's, she was so generous and really came through and is really masterful and, and really scary as well. Mm -hmm. she, she brings the heat. And I think it's going to be really fun to see how the, the three, like you were mentioning, Harvey or, or Dr. Sanchez, Carapax, uh, and, and Susan's character all stand up against these guys. But yeah. they're, you, we're formidable opponents as well. Like, we're, yeah. we, we're not going to... Yeah, you are. Them. You guys have a bug ship, yeah. which, can we talk about the bug oh. ship? The bug ship The bug fart. ship? Wait, what? Those bells. Yeah. Wait, yeah. tell uh, me uh, more. Uh, those pedos. 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 It's... it's it's got some quirks to it. I'm thinking of my family saying, ¿Quién, ¿quién se tiró ese peo? <laughs> but you know, and leave it to you know an uncle to get something started that hasn't been started in 30 right? years. I finally got that thing. I yeah, yeah. That yeah. Hadn't been did a started. great job. The wow. secret Rudy way. That was really nice to, to, to film. We had a lot of fun in the bug yep. ship. Yeah. The bug ship, I mean, the set design for this entire film is just Phenomenal bug ship, bug layer, like everything. Every was bug, so everything awesome. bug. Every single bug in the film, down to the ant. Beautiful. <laughs> so we're gonna see more. How many bugs are we gonna see in this? At film? least four. There's at, at least, least four, four bugs. At least four. I, wow. Yeah, at least four. No. <laughs> he already knows four bugs. You've been counting. <laughs> How did you feel about Beatles before taking on this role? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know how often I'm coming into contact with Beatles. Yeah. Have you and ever seen a Beatle? Yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Def definitely seen a Beatle. <laughs> I don't know. Have you? Have you? The green ones? Yeah. yeah. Don't you catch oh, them? Oh, like the Jews? Yes, a that's, that's they're, like a, yes. they're like a kite. Yes. The Spanish little, Beatle. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little kid at Disney. You're about to get yeah. canceled. Yeah. You're about to get canceled. And they're about. <laughs> 
Beatles like are drones. blind. Yeah. Well, Beatles I hope we get to see more of the bug ship, not just in this movie, um, but like in future films too. And Sholo, I wanted to ask you, have you had any conversations with James Gunn about the future of Blue Beetle? Because he has a connection to Peacemaker in the comics. I wanted to know, are, would you want to appear in Peacemaker season yeah, two or the Booster Gold the series? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've <laughs> We all want to know yeah, about the future of Blue Beetle. So Sholo. I have had the pleasure of getting to speak with Mr. James Gunn and the whole DC fan. <gasps> um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think, you know, first we have to cross this first hill, right? And, yeah. and introduce Jaime to the world. But I think uh, it's up to the audience to, to watch the movie. It's, it's up to, you know, everyone to show up for the movie. And, and it's so wonderful that we get to make movies like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it does well, we'll get to open more doors for more Blue Beetles and not even just for the people up here, but there's, psh, we got a whole thing set up. So, so, so many Beetles so many to choose Beatles? from, so many comics to choose from and, and really just a whole world where we're super appreciative that, that DC's, you know, took the first swing at the, the live action Latino superhero movie. So we're ready to, to do it again. If the if, if the crowd wants it, yeah. yeah, I know that people are super appreciative that you are in the star lead role. When you were diving into Jaime Reyes, mm -hmm. what about his story for you made you go? I can't wait for people to see to find out this about him on screen because we we see we meet so many superheroes these days. Mm -hmm. Was there like one thing that you specifically connected to and related to? Now I realize growing up as a Latino, except when I was growing up, I didn't think that way. I was just like, oh, this is how I grew up. I, I always have been super close to my family. And it's just been how it's been like that my whole life. And it's been inherent. It's, I've never known any difference. And getting to be a part of a movie where that is the same case, but just naturally, just, you know, without having to shove it in your face or be like, this is how the Latino life is like. It's just, it's, it's yeah. how all of us have kind of grown up and that's why it feels so natural. That's, that's one of the main things I was excited about getting to do this is portray this family who even through strife and struggle is like strong and like is ready to, to push on forward and, and getting, and then the other part that really made me excited is that he's, he's brown. And, yeah. and I thinking of Angel, Angel and I had a lot of conversations about like this is for us as kids you know, yeah. we didn't, there weren't a ton of examples, uh, at least on the big screen, so that's where. Yeah. I'm, I'm going. And how much we all love superheroes. It's like we ah, found. Ah, I know, right? right? Yeah, thanks. I it love was, it. And it was all because of Nacho Libre, Jack Black, you. Yes, Jack and Black. El Chapulín Colorado. Um, I love that you brought up family, though, Shola, because the first time I ever saw my family reflected on screen was thanks to you, George, watching the George Lopez show. And I think I speak for a lot of people in my generation when first and foremost, I wanna say thank you because that was the first time we really felt embraced by all types of different audiences. Yeah. And there's a reason why you are one of the 25 most influential Hispanics in America, according to Time Magazine. <laughs> uh, when you were on set for this film, George, what were your reflections on the trail that you've blazed for so many of us? Um, well, you know, I think my, that first show was really kind of about not really having a family and then growing up and having a family. So, you know, um, Having kids in that show was great, but also, you know, I don't really have a lot of family uh, that I speak to, so uh, to get to be around them, very emotional for me because, you know, we really did feel like a family really fast and did stuff together, so, like, I never let them know that, but <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, it, it means a lot to me to be able to be embraced by, by them, especially because I always felt like a little bit of an outsider, but, you know, this, this does put you in another place, so I appreciate that. Yeah, and I, I know what the show meant, and it still means to people, so it means that to me, too. It's yeah. such a beautiful sentiment. Uh, was there also a moment on set where you were just like, wow, we've come so far or we haven't come far? I mean, Adina Barraza, you know, is just, and Damian, they're just amazing actors. So anytime that we all got together and you look at them and you see like these amazing yeah. actors with us, that it does dawn on you that it's something very special. 